Hey everybody, Srini here from Unmistakable Creative. And today I wanna to talk about uh, maximizing your output with MEM and how the way that I've used MEM has changed since I started using it. Uh, you probably saw some of your earlier videos on how to build a second brain in MEM if you've been keeping up with any of these videos at all. And I talked about the various ways and we could do all of these things, but like any tool, that you use, the, the more that you use it, the more that the way you use it actually will start to evolve and the more you'll start to adapt it to your own workflow. So I thought I would give you an overview of how I've changed everything in terms of the way that I'm using MEM now to maximize creative output. So let's start with the whole idea of the para framework, which comes from Tiago Forte's building a second brain method for knowledge management. If you don't know, para stands for projects, areas of responsibility, resources, and archives. And initially when I started working on this, I basically didn't create pages for every single project or create memes for every single project. And one of the things I think that was wrong with what I did was that within each of the project memes, I actually created separate memes for tasks and separate memes for references, which actually makes all of this unnecessarily confusing when you actually go to your daily tasks. So you can see here that part of the reason that I did this is because we want to be able to shift from project to project, which Scott Belsky in his book, Making Ideas, happen says is called sequential tasking instead of multitasking. So you could be working on multiple projects, but also simultaneously get things done without getting distracted while being able to stay in mem the entire time without having to constantly context shift between different apps. So you'll see here that what I'm working on right now is a course outline for something that's going to be called maximum output with mem and I'll include a landing page uh, with where you can enter your email address for those of you who might be interested. So you see here I have you know various tasks for maximum output one of them today being record this video and you see here that I have my references. So I kept the references separate because I think this would add a lot of necessarily clutter to it, but you can see here that um, writing out my ideas for what this course would look like. So let's go back to this project page. And you can see here the project basically has a couple of different tags. It has a project status, which is active. Nan Eliason in his own course actually talked about using different metadata through tags. So for example, you can write an overview of every project. And when I get into templates, I'll show you how you can actually create a template for every single project. So that's one of the things that I've changed. But the thing that makes this really valuable is that way, when I go to my tasks, uh, you'll see that all the tasks are organized by project. So that way you actually can see these all in one go and basically do what Scott Belsky calls sequential tasking. And you can see here that based on when I entered it, uh, because I started working on this last week, it actually puts it here last week as an open task, even though it's something that I'm planning on doing today. And so you can see here that we have all our upcoming tasks, but as well as project related tasks and tasks for areas of responsibility. So let's go back to that projects page and go back to para. So in addition to projects, we have areas of responsibility. So I created a separate page for the areas of responsibility based on the various things that I'm working on. So the big difference between projects and areas of responsibility is that basically project is something that has a finite uh, amount of time or an end date, whereas an area of responsibility is something that you're going to do ongoing. So for example, I have an email newsletter for the unmistakable creative, and that's something that I do ongoing. For example, I also have a website for the unmistakable creative and we're constantly making updates to various things so this falls under areas of responsibility but again just like we did with our projects by creating a separate page for the various er various areas of responsibility you're actually able to fill even when you see your tasks so ultimately when it comes to creating your areas of responsibility pages you want to choose them based on the activity for that particular area so for example there are a number of different areas of responsibility that we have in our day-to-day -day knowledge work. In the, my case, when it comes to running the Unmistakable Creative, I write blog posts, so I store these in a writing inbox, which is an idea that I got from another blog post that I read somewhere in Medium. Then the Unmistakable Creative podcast, anything for metrics and finances. So I have SEO work for the Unmistakable Creative website. You can see here that I have all these different tasks, and it makes it really easy to find them and see them in order, so I can just go through and start basically crossing off tasks very quickly without having to shift to several different apps. And then finally, let's go back to the actual outline for this video. In our resources page, we're gonna have things like book notes. We're going to have notes from different online courses. Now book notes, I actually didn't add here just because I have so many of them, it would take forever to link all of them. But because they're book notes, they would also be tagged as resources. And if I clicked on the resources tag, I will basically be able to find 
any of the book notes that I've taken here, you can see the various book notes from the books like Black and White Thinking, Deep Work, The Checklist Manifesto, and all that. But I think where my thinking of MEM really started to change was when I discovered the entire concept of smart notes in the Zettelkasten. And for those of you who are not familiar with smart notes, it really changes the way that we think about note taking. Because typically, for most of us, myself included, when we're taking notes, what we do is we just copy and paste highlights and quotes from a book that we've read, from an article that we've read. And the problem with that is that it doesn't really indicate understanding. It's basically just copying and pasting knowledge. You're basically transferring information. And real knowledge management is not just storing references. If you've ever gone from high school to college and you get to college and you take a class in high school, it's really easy to get good grades because you just do what the teacher says, memorize what's going to be on the test. But if you go to college, that actually doesn't work very well. And I learned this the hard way when I took an economics midterm at Berkeley, where I thought by doing problem sets, studying everything that was in the textbook, I would absolutely understand the material. The problem is all I had done is highlight things and regurgitate information. And what happens is that the information or the concepts are presented to you in a context that you've never seen before. So suddenly you actually don't actually know as much as you thought you did. And that's where smart notes come in because what smart notes force you to do is to actually elaborate on the information. And the way this works is you have reference notes, which basically are your original source. So for example, if we went to a book that I have here, so all of the various highlights from the book would be considered reference notes. And then you have what are called literature notes where you actually interpret whatever it is and rewrite it in your own words and you link it to the original source. And that way you have an idea of where that idea came from. And you can use your literature notes to do a lot of different things as well. I mean, I've written blog posts from my literature notes and it helps you to quote things when you're writing. That's something I do frequently. And then finally you have permanent notes, which permanent notes are basically notes that make sense without the original context. And what's fascinating about this is that it actually allows you to produce more and work less. I, I typically have a practice of writing a thousand words a day. And I think the thing that's been the most challenging for me about this is that I don't have to do that anymore. All I have to do is write six notes a day from the things that I'm reading. Prior to reference notes, literature notes, and permanent notes, you're also going to have what Sunk Ahrens, the guy who created, wrote the book, How to Take Smart Notes, uh, actually calls fleeting notes. And those fleeting notes are basically the things that occur to you while you're reading a book, while you're coming up with something. And one way that I like to use fleeting notes is just while I'm reading, I have a, a Moleskine notebook where I just write down the page number and then whatever thought occurred to me as a byproduct of that. And then when I'm ready to actually enter them into MEM, I basically turn those into literature notes and I eventually will scan everything from Readwise and put that series of reference notes together for a book. The real key to this, according to Sunk Aarons, is to think about this in terms of the ability to discover something. You want to basically create a note so that it's accessible to your future self. And you really want to think like not an archivist. So what does he mean by that? Basically, you have to go beyond storing information and thinking like a writer means that you elaborate. You write about the things that you read, which is actually a really good way to enforce them. But the other thing that really became obvious to me in this process of going deeper into MEM and really reconsidering how I use MEM to maximize output was to start thinking in networks instead of hierarchies. So typically, whenever we use a note-taking system, whether it's Evernote or any of the other sort of standard note-taking tools, we tend to organize information in hierarchies. And the problem with organizing information in hierarchies is that sometimes we'll capture an idea that we you know can't remember, we don't know where it's at, or we won't capture the idea at all. The beautiful thing about thinking in networks instead of hierarchies is it really shows you how to build a system that basically ensures that you never forget anything. And you can see here, this is turning into an article that I'm working on. And why this is so important is because often we're having ideas while we're working on another idea because we have associations to the brain. So for example, I had read that the keywords note-taking strategy would be good for uh, search engine optimization because I could rank for them. And so I basically just linked this while I was writing it even though I didn't necessarily have anything to add to it just yet. But you can see here that because I put it there, I'm not going to forget it. And one of the things that is is pretty standard 
with a lot of note taking tools is you have a focus shifts, even if you're going from page to page or whatever it is. So you might, you know, want to have to stop to capture a new idea, or go to a different document, and then come back to the original document that you're working on. That's the beautiful thing about Mem is that you actually don't have to do that. So you can see here I have this thing, this linked Mem called Ideas to Explore and Consider. And you can see here these are just things that I've been thinking bit by bit over the last couple of days, and I just keep adding them there. And so that way, no idea really goes to waste, even if it's not, you know, fully formed. And just by linking all this stuff, even if you have nothing to say about it, you are able to reduce that friction between having insight and getting things done. The reality is that your brain, as I say here, is a network, not a hierarchy. And we don't tend to think linearly, as any of us know. If you've ever done creative work, you basically just come up with ideas after ideas. And this basically allows you to form connections between your ideas without interrupting your workflow. So that's a, a really high level overview of how I actually have been using Mem to maximize output. Finally, let's go to templates really quick and I'll show you some of the things that I've changed about my templates. So some of these I've actually grabbed from things that some of you guys have shared in the Mem community. But the big ones that I've done are mem templates for my literature notes. So for example, if you go here, you can see that for every literature note, I have this same structure. So that way, when I capture the note, so let me just show you how we do this. I can basically go to my timeline and I can say, make smart decisions or whatever it is. This is just something random that I'm typing for the sake of this video. And then what I can do is I can just press slash and I can have a literature note template. So that way it speeds up the process uh, for tagging all of this stuff as literature notes. So that way you don't have to keep going back and you know adding all of these things. It just makes everything a lot more seamless. I actually did a separate literature notes template for things that I capture from the internet because typically when you capture something using Mem Spotlight from the internet, it'll put the source in right away. And so I created a separate literature note just so I can deal with stuff that I get off of the internet. So that actually is a high level overview of how the way that I've used Mem has changed, how I am using it to maximize output. And uh, like I said, I will include a link to a landing page for this course that I'm working on. Uh, and if you're interested, feel free to enter your email address. I promise I won't send you on any unnecessary spam or crap. But yeah, that's basically how I'm using Mem to maximize output in a nutshell.